So, good morning everyone. This is number 16 in our series on the Gospel. And I've decided to um, continue a little bit with the theme from last week to finish it off a little bit better. And then we want to go on to um, leprosy as a symbol of disease and disease of the soul. So the purpose of these studies is to show the different pictures that God gives in his word, mental pictures or physical pictures of the gospel and the changes that need to take place in us. So let's just um, revise a little bit here from last week from John 15 and this is when Jesus was about to be crucified he said in verse 1 I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman okay so this is Jesus talking the father is the husbandman And Jesus is the vine in this particular illustration. And then we'll see as we go on, we are the branches. But the branches need a work done to become branches. We, by being born into this world, we don't automatically become a branch of Christ. We are a branch from a wild vine and we must connect with the heavenly vine to receive eternal life. Eternal life comes from our connection with this heavenly vine. And that vine's connection with us. And as we illustrated from last week out on the grass, this initial connection comes through grafting. We are grafted into the heavenly vine. And that vine is Jesus Christ. Now, one of the main ways of grafting is where we cut the piece of wood so into a V shape and then the other piece is cut the opposite. Way, and the two are brought together so that this part here and this part here match this part here as closely as possible and then the graft is bound then the sap which is coming from here is flowing through into here when they're joined together and while that sap and that nutrients is coming into the um, sky on then the vine will grow but it takes some healing first before this to take place now this actual Grafting in is the same as the rebirth. Jesus said you must be born again. We need new life from the source, Jesus Christ, in order to grow. But the continuation of that life, we can say, is reformation, 
or growth. Abiding in this case of this particular illustration, abiding in Christ, abiding in Jesus. And so in John chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, uh, it's a bit further actually, we'll read a bit further than that, but anyway, let's begin. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. So we have this point. Jesus is the vine, the father is the husbandman, and we are the branches as we shall see. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So even if we are a branch in the vine of Jesus, if we're not bearing fruit, we will be pruned in order to bear more fruit. And if we wither and die as the life of Jesus flying into us is not appreciated or we reject Christ, we become a withered vine again. So it's not, it's subject to conditions that that sap flow from Jesus will flow into us. And that is necessary for that sap flow to flow every day. So we need to spend time in communion with God, in prayer and in study, for that sap flow to flow into us. And if we neglect that and we become a dead branch, then eventually we will be taken out. Then it goes on to say, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So in this case, these disciples were made clean by the word. Abide in me and I in you. So it's a two-way process. We have to abide in Christ and he abides in us. And that is this union that is why Jesus is the vine. He is the rootstock. And we abide in him. Now, when we look at a vine, which normally grows... on some supports. And we'll see the vine, it comes, in this case, over the wall. When Jesus spoke these words, he was on the side of the wall that the disciples were. In other words, he was living on the earth. But because mankind wouldn't accept Christ and they killed him, then Christ is working from behind the wall now symbolically and we are on this side of the wall and it's through the connection of Christ through these branches they are the ones that are to bear fruit for Christ to bring the sap of Christ to the people so that they can connect with that vine themselves so each of us must be personally connected with Christ this will become clearer as we move on a little bit further. So I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. 
For without me, you can do nothing. So we are dependent upon the life of Jesus Christ to live this life on this earth and into the heavenly realm. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So the whole of this um, first part of the chapter is about abiding in Jesus. And he used the vine to illustrate this work. I'd just like to read from the book Desire of Ages, page 675, some thoughts from here which enlarge upon our understanding of this scripture. The first paragraph on page 675 we read, I am the true vine. Now this implies that there are other vines as well. The Jews had always regarded the vine as the most noble of plants and a type of all that was powerful, excellent and fruitful. Israel had been represented as a vine which God had planted in the promised land. The Jews based their hope of salvation on the fact of their connection with Israel. But Jesus says, I am the real vine. Now Israel at that time was the nation and the church. So we shouldn't base our connection with the church as the means of salvation. We must be personally connected with Jesus Christ, as we shall see in the next sentence or two. But Jesus says, I am the real vine. Think not that through a connection with Israel, you may become partakers of the, of the life of God and inheritors of his promise. Through me alone is spiritual life received. So the part of Israel, whether it's Israel of old or Israel of today, is to point the people to the true vine, Jesus Christ. It's not to bring them solely into the church because we often hear people say you must come to the church the church coming to the church is a fruit of coming to jesus christ and many people come to a church but they never come to christ and this is the thought here that we must be careful that we ourselves have that personal connection with Jesus Christ. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. On the hills of Palestine, our heavenly father had planted this goodly vine and he himself was the husbandman. Many were attracted by the beauty of this vine and declared its heavenly origin. But to the leaders in Israel, it appeared as a root out of a dry ground. So they didn't find Jesus attractive. That is the point. They took the plant and bruised it and trampled it under their unholy feet. Their thought was to destroy it forever. 
And when we destroy or seek to destroy the impressions of Jesus Christ upon our minds through the Holy Spirit, we are severing ourselves from the true vine. And this has terrible repercussions. But the heavenly husbandman never lost sight of his plant. So that's God, never lost sight of Jesus. After men thought they had killed it, he took it and replanted it on the other side of the wall. Remember what I said in the beginning. That this vine is on the other side of the wall today, physically speaking. The vine stock was to be no longer visible. So we can't see Jesus anymore specifically. It was hidden from the rude assaults of men, but the branches of the vine hung over the wall. So there they are hanging over the wall. The vines... Um, they were to represent the vine. Through them, grafts might still be united to the vine. From them, fruit has been obtained. There has been a harvest which the passers-by have plucked. I am the vine, you are the branches. So God is depending upon his branches which is to be us, to produce fruit for his kingdom. And if we're not producing fruit for his kingdom, then we will be pruned so that we do produce fruit more fully. And this is true in nature. It's also true in the spiritual life. A lot of calamities that come upon people is because they are not listening to the Lord. They take a course of action which is against God's will, even though they, they are Christians. They take a course of action and God prunes off that excess growth. He stops them from going further into that way when it's not in harmony with his will. Or well, we want something and God doesn't give it to us and that's for our own good so that we will produce more spiritual fruit, that we will do more works of God and less works of our own when that desire is a selfish desire. So this is the way God teaches us and it's a part of his plan that he will prune off the excess foliage as we shall see as we uh, continue on in order that we will produce more fruit. So we read, Though he was about to be removed from them, their spiritual union with him was to be unchanged. This is page 675, the third paragraph. The connection of the branch with the vine, he says, represents the relation you are to sustain to me. And people might say, oh, this is child's play. Why are you talking about this? Why did Jesus talk about this? It's so simple, yet so profound. If you're not connected, you're not going to receive the sap. You're not going to prosper in your life. And eventually that spiritual life will die out. You have to be connected to the source to the rootstock in order to flourish.
the sky the sky on which is the piece that's grafted in is engrafted into the living vine and fiber by fiber vein by vein it grows into the rootstock so that is the way it works it takes a long time for this graft once it's uh, been put in place for it to really generate a lot of growth in the new um, part of the tree or vine the life of the vine becomes the life of the branch so the soul dead in trespasses and sins receives life through connection with Christ that's how we get life that is the rebirth that's how we reconnect that's the I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a new heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them so that is that process and here we are illustrating it from the simple things of nature as Jesus did by faith in him as a personal saviour the union is formed so that is that crucial moment that crucial time when we give our hearts fully to the Lord and we are grafted in to Jesus Christ become a partaker of the divine nature the sinner unites his weakness to Christ's strength his emptiness to Christ's fullness his frailty to Christ's enduring might then he has the mind of Christ so this mind comes as a result of the union there we have the union and one of the results is the mind of Christ because we take partake of the life of Christ we're connected with that life and when we have that vital connection the sap will flow through to us let's continue now the humanity of Christ has touched our humanity now that is why Jesus is the vine he's not the husbandman Jesus is the vine because Jesus who is God became man Jesus has life original unborrowed and underived in himself that means he has no beginning and no ending but Jesus became the only begotten Son of God in order to connect with us so that is the union let's read it again the humanity of Christ has touched our humanity it's touched this is where it touches in the spiritual union which takes place when the heart is changed and the old life is taken away the sins of the life but also the power of sin which has been ruling us is broken and our humanity has touched divinity we touch divinity through our union with Christ because he is divine and Christ abides in us 
and we abide in Christ. And therefore we are touching divinity in a real way, not just make-believe. This isn't make-believe what we're talking about here. This is a real thing, but it's dependent upon our faith taking hold of God day by day that we can live that life that he wants us to live. Thus, through the agency of the Holy Spirit, man becomes a partaker of the divine nature. The divine nature of Jesus Christ is the nature that we become a partaker of. That is the point. He is accepted in the Beloved. Now let's go to page 676. This union, once formed, must be maintained. Christ said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. This is the same thought coming out again, but it's certainly worth emphasizing because eternal life depends on this concept becoming a part of our lives. This is no casual touch or often on connection. The branch becomes a part of the living vine. The communication of life, strength and fruitfulness from the root to the branches is unobstructed and constant. Separated from the vine, the branch cannot live. No more, said Jesus, can you live apart from me. The life you have received from me can only preserve, be preserved by continual communion. Without me, you cannot overcome one sin or resist one temptation. So every sin that we are tempted with, we can only resist through Christ's power. Abide in me and I in you. Abiding in Christ means a constant receiving of his spirit a life of unreserved surrender to his service. The channel of communication must be open continually between man and his God. As the vine branch constantly draws the sap from the living vine, so are we to cling to Jesus and receive from him by faith the strength and perfection of his own character. So notice that we are to receive the strength and perfection of Christ's own character. And that is how we become overcomers. When Christ's power is working in us and pushing out into our branches, then when we come in contact with sin or temptation, that power working through us will resist the powers of those temptations. Just as in nature, Any growing vine or any growing tree must resist the things, the diseases, the adverse situations that come upon it. Frost, heat, sun, shade, pruning, bashing through animals, chomping and so forth in order to live 
So we must receive that continuous sap from Christ in order to continue to grow. Let's read on. The root sends its nourishment through the branch to the outermost twig. So Christ communicates the current of spiritual strength to every believer. So long as the soul is united to Christ, there is no danger that it will wither or decay. The life of the vine will be manifest in fragrant fruit on the branches. He that abideth in me, said Jesus, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So let's look now at the vine. And why we need to be pruned sometimes. Even if we are with Christ, there are times when we need to be pruned in our lives in order to bear more fruit. We'll just make a list of some of these things. Okay, so the first stage, as we put, is grafting, which is a symbol of the rebirth or being changed in life or getting that connection, connected to Christ. The second is abiding. Second stage, abiding, growing. And during that time, we will also receive cutting. Some things will be cut away from our lives in order to make way for new growth, some things will be cut out. Next, we have flowering. And this has to do with ministry. This has to do with the reforming of the life. Flowering, fruiting. These are important stages too. They're normally after fruiting. There will be cutting and growing again. All these stages are important to our spiritual life. But why are we to be pruned? Nobody likes being pruned. Or often people don't like having their lives pruned their bad habits, their um, desires for worldly ambitions are cut off. This happened to the disciples. They desired to be with Christ, who would be the king, and they would be the rulers of the world. They would drive out the Romans and they would become conquerors of the world. That was their hope. But that idea had to be pruned out of their life, had to be taken away, those worldly ambitions, also their bad habits. 
their wrong concepts of God's character that made them want to have a desire to disdain, to hate the Samaritans and the other peoples of the earth. Those things had to be changed in their lives. They had to be pruned out. So let's talk about pruning specifically now. And we want to see some points about why God has to prune us. The first one, withered branches. Now the example at this time of a withered branch was Judas. Now it was not Jesus that destroyed Judas. Judas destroyed himself because he didn't partake of the juice of the sap that was coming from Jesus. The miracles, the raising from the dead, the teachings, all these things, the healings, he didn't respond positively to those things. And we know that Judas killed himself because he rejected the Saviour. And so Judas became a withered branch and was separated from the twelve. So then we have the disciples who remained. They had dreams of grandeur. Dreams of ruling the world. They had dreams of wealth. Power, exaltation, and it was impossible for them to fulfill the mission that Jesus had for them while they continued with those dreams. And particularly, they had wrong concepts of God's character. And it took a long time for them to be cured of these wrong concepts. And same with us. We have false ideas that need to be pruned out of our lives. False thinking. We have bad habits that we have inherited, that we have cultivated, that have become a part of our lives. And these must be taken away from our lives. Now, another thing that's mentioned in this chapter in the book Desire of Ages is branches trailing along the ground. So anyone who's grown vines will know that the branches go everywhere. If you let them, they just get thicker and thicker and thicker, and many branches will end up growing on the ground if you don't prune them off the ground. Now this causes disease, and the, any fruit which is setting on the ground doesn't usually do any good. It gets dust on it, it gets animals eating it, and so forth and so on. So these branches which are to be pruned off are a symbol of worldliness. And as we go along in the Christian walk, 
We always, as human beings, we have that tendency toward wanting to come down into earthly things, don't we? Even in the work of God, many people have been corrupted by riches, especially in the big churches like we have in America and in other wealthier countries. People become corrupted by earthliness instead of the vine growing heavenly wood or looking heavenly wood, they go earthly wood. And so the vine needs to be pruned in those areas. So let's put this here. We'll just sum it up as earthliness. Now, when we are growing a plant like this, once we start getting the fruit on the plant, so forth and so on, if there's too much shade, then the fruits can't get the sun on them properly and they don't ripen properly. So the person often cuts off some of these branches so that the fruit can then be in the sun and receive the sun onto it. And then the fruit ripens to a golden colour. So even if we're fruiting, it says that in order to be more fruitful and to have better quality fruit, more fruit and better quality, the Apostle, in this case, or the worker for God, must also be pruned. They must also be pruned. So, in order for the worker to be a good worker, he must be learning. He must be being refined. He must be being changed into the image of Christ. And this is what happened to the 11 apostles who continued to be molded and fashioned by God. So I think that covers the points that we wanted to look at today in regard to abiding in Christ. Don't be surprised if you're abiding in Christ that you receive some pruning. That withered branches around you may be cut out. As with the case of Judas, people will fall away from the truth and go out into the world. But those who abide, they will eventually bear fruit, they will partake of the sap of Jesus Christ, who was God and man, and in doing that, they will represent his character. So with those thoughts, we shall um, stop now, and in the next study, we will look at leprosy and sickness as an illustration of um, how sin can be described in our lives. So that's what we'll do in the next study.
Thank you.